Hi guys, I'm Arisa. Welcome to another episode of The Bridge, Africa's number one financial literacy show, brought to you by Business Day. This season, we're shaking things up a bit. We're going to be interviewing millennial business leaders and celebrities and talking to them about the business models and financial decisions behind their successful brands. Our guest today is Falari Falano, aka Files the Bad Guy. He's a triple threat actor, musician, and comedian. Stay tuned. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Bad guys in the building. Uh. I told you I'm the life for the party. party. Why your guys want to try to lead that beat? Beat in your own gun. Make me want to hack. Super, give me them sacks. Hello, Maggie. Hello, Falari. How are you, ma'am? <laughs> Thank you for coming on the show. Val's the bad guy. Um, I'm super excited for you to be here because you're one Nigerian artist that has created multiple streams of income for himself. And the whole point of the show, The Bridge, is to teach a millennial generation about the business model and financial decisions be behind brands like yours yeah so talk to us a little bit about let's start from the beginning your father is a renowned lawyer in nigeria you started out as a lawyer mm -hmm. what was that conversation like telling your dad you know what <coughs> actually forget about this law degree now i want to be yeah. a musician contrary to popular belief that conversation was actually one of the most um of let me say one of the easiest conversations really? actually because it wasn't it wasn't that much of a big deal it was just like um dad while i was still in school yeah that you know this is what i really like doing you know i'm really passionate about this and i'm doing this so at that point it wasn't a, a conversation of oh dad i want to stop school because i like what i'm doing this Maybe that would have been a side. more difficult conversation. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it was just like this is something I'm doing, and I'm I like ah, yeah, continue doing what you're doing as long as you know you're focusing <laughs> on your studies. You know, so that that wasn't too bad. That's yeah. amazing because ten years ago, if you told a Nigerian parent that you know you didn't want to be a lawyer, you wanted to be a musician, mm -hmm. they would have probably sent you out of the house. Yeah. So it's nice to know that your dad was like super Yeah, supportive. super chilled about it. I think, and I think I sort of eased my way into it as well. Okay. Like I said, while I was studying, already sort of gave them the heads up. Like, okay, th this one is there. Oh, so yeah. it was more of a case of yeah. the hobby started to pay off. Exactly. And it was like, why should he not do this when it's like super successful? And exactly. And he's already been able to, you know, get a law degree for himself. He's been called to the bar. Mm. He's actually a lawyer, lawyer. So, so you, worst case scenario, he still he has, has something already, to fall back on. Know. Okay, so let's talk about your, the fact that you're a triple threat. You're an actor, a comedian, a musician. Am I missing something else? Businessman. <laughs> yeah. I love it, businessman. So, to a young artist out there, they want to be the next files. What are the income streams? So, outside of, you know, recording the album or the single and putting it out like how do you make money as an artist in nigeria because mm. it looks very glamorous like yeah. in, in the music videos and everything but sometimes you hear that the bank account doesn't quite match the persona and it's not easy I mean, a lot of people <laughs> find it sort of difficult to um wrap their heads around that but it's mm. not it's not all rosy as it looks on TV. Yeah. We make it look rosy on TV, but yeah. at the end of the day, you make it look good. Yeah, <laughs> but at the end of the day, artists have their own struggles too. Yeah, you know. But um, they're not that many income streams. They're just some major ones, and those are really the ones. If you can really sort of milk it, then you'll be all right. Okay. So, like you said, um, record sales. Now they're all digital. I mean, mm -hmm. there's still hard copy CDs that go around on the streets, but, but that's not that big anymore. Income is. Yeah really mm -hmm. minimal um so digital sales mm. um so itunes your youtube views mm. your uh apple music so do those Spotify. give you do those give you like a revenue in the millions it give you a revenue in dollars okay in dollars yeah <laughs> so by the time you convert it to yeah it's in millions <laughs> okay <laughs> it's in million. and it's very it's it's um it's it's regular so it's 
to an extent there's some security because it's it's continuous your, mm. your catalog is there forever mm. so you would sort of continue to earn for so life, as long as honest. you build an audience that buys your music thank you very much as long as you continue <laughs> to grow your audience and you continue to increase your your catalog mm. so you continue making more songs to upload you know and not just songs like i said youtube views for example okay. so you know it could just be so this is nigeria do we make money from it well you, this is nigeria <laughs> is a peculiar sort of content okay now because it's not an original it's mm. a um it's a remake of the original, of course, by Childish Gambino. Yeah. This is America. So the instrumental doesn't belong to me. So mm. basically, I've just done a cover mm. of the original. And, um, you know, because it's not entirely my copyright, it's not a content I'm trying to make money, money of, from. You know, so you're I more like you're trying to send a message. Exactly. I loved it. I thought it was brilliant. I didn't think that anyone was going to... T do like a Nigerian spin on it and take it seriously because mm -hmm. it really brought home like a lot of issues that we all talk about in our parlors yeah but don't do anything about and i i thought the message was timely it has five million views on youtube that is amazing yeah um definitely that that is quite amazing and you know it's not really been that long um that it dropped and yeah the sort of response diddy gave you a shout out please um i don't really don't, don't talk to me again yes because i'm now a like, foreign guy okay? i'm telling you this is, he he said i'm going to play this on revolt yeah like i i was so blown by that uncle diddy uncle diddy is, is my is actually my uncle so like i don't really talk to normal people oh again. my god please sorry so just sorry. introduce me that's all i'm asking i would think but about it, it was it was such an important move for me because i felt like it shows you how powerful social media is. Yeah. It shows you how powerful it is when you dare to use your voice on a platform as big as Instagram that you're open to a global audience. audience For someone exactly. like Diddy to notice exactly, to what you it did, yeah. that was huge. And that sort of goes back to what I was saying about just getting up and making a move. Mm. So, like, at the end of the day, you can be a young lad out there that has the talent, has the dream, has the idea. Yeah. You could have gotten the This Is Nigeria idea from the, conf uh, the confines of your bedroom. Yeah. You could have gone to a studio to, you know, pay for studio session to record it. Mm -hmm. You get it professionally done. You could have found a way to, you know, shoot the video in a way that is not so glamorous, yeah. but just, you know, get the idea and just upload it online. And so you never it doesn't know really cost you much to, to actually get started. Mm -hmm. You know, at the end of the day, you're open to a big audience and anyone, you know, could sort of pick it up. Like I now, Didi, Didi has picked up <laughs> I my know, stuff. Now you're a superstar. My price has gone up. Next week, we'll call you for an interview and you'll be like, sorry, what? I only do international interviews <laughs> Yeah, only, <now."> only <laughs> uh, LA, um, anywhere in California, I know. <laughs> I love it. Okay, let's talk about <clears throat> Yahoo Boys. Mm. So, I know that there are times when you've taken a stance against um, musicians putting sort of glamorizing what um four nine boys are doing in nigeria it's interesting that we're now in a time where there are young people who look up to them and think you know what this is the best way to make money because there's corruption in nigeria and this is fast and everything mm. everybody that's talking against it is talking nonsense mm. because they don't know how hard it is what do you have what what do you have to say to that, to the young people who feel like being a Yahoo boy is justified because we live in a corrupt society? I think it's a false dream to, to sort of sell. Mm. It's a, it's, um, it's bad. It's bad. It's plain, it's plain bad. And we have to call it speed, it's speed. Um, since the first time that I sort of made mention of the issue of uh, fraud, uh, internet fraud and artists sort of glorifying that yeah. it was a bit of an issue and mm. you know people sort of came backlash. for me and there was backlash and that just made me sort think of like what kind of country are we living like come things are quite bad yeah you know it's almost like the irregular has been regularized and mm. that's horrible shouldn't be the case what's bad is bad it's a criminal act it's it's fraud you know you're ruining lives by just taking from people you know just like this yeah he's stealing his arm drop at the end it's the same thing and Do somehow we found a way to justify to it to justify it but i don't because i and i think the thing is young people feel like it's frustrating to work hard and we need more people that are shining a light on different career paths that mm -hmm. are 
not fraudulent exactly to say okay you know what if you go down this route you work hard you can make money too yeah maybe not yahoo boy money in one year but you can still make money and that is another thing yeah. i think because of the sort of lifestyle that um those guys have been sort of portraying the young lads now think oh you know they're now in a bit of a of a hurry to make huge, huge sums of money sums of money but i mean at the end of the day you have to sort of work your way up mm. it's not mm. we love the rags to riches story mm. we're in love with that story so we we like to hear songs started from nothing mm. they didn't yeah, have food to eat and then they built themselves up which is amazing mm. but if we hear that a well-to-do person's child mm. does well the automatic thing is eh, before Mm. like why won't they you know why wouldn't yeah, they do what, well what, what i've been able to build for myself what i've been able to grow for myself doesn't have anything to do with your dad yeah it's not i it wasn't given to me on a platter of gold mm -hmm. do you get what i'm saying it wasn't a matter of being spoon fed or you know they did not put feeding butter in my because mouth. people don't understand like even if you even if you did come from privilege you've had to work really yeah, hard to, get, yeah, to, to get, get to where i am to this point. And i'm a young lad i'm 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 going to be 28 this year okay quite all right i'm not i probably don't have mm. yahoo boy money mm. like but you've done all right for yourself but what i have in my bank account i'm content with mm. like it's not bad <laughs> it's, it's actually okay and i'm willing to I be patient <laughs> yeah. i'm, I'm to willing to, to be patient point. to get to the point where i'm going to be making billions mm -hmm. like at least it's, it's small small now but a lot of people don't really have that patience they just want to, just want to hit it hammer in one day okay so let's talk about a few personal finance questions when did you make your first million? Your first, first million naira, not dollars. <laughs> <laughs> My first million naira, um, 2011, was it? 10? 2010 or 11, Sha. So how? Was it for music? Yeah, 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 yeah. for music. For what music. song in particular? No, it was a show. Nice. It was a show. And, um... Was it 2010? I think it was 10. At that 10 or 11, Sha. Mm -hmm. Around that time. <laughs> and, um... Wow, well, this is 2018. Yup. Ah! I'm You're a, getting old. Yeah. So, I just... My manager just got a call. They wanted to book me for a show. I think it was in Abuja. Mm -hmm. And they said, Ah, we're going to pay you 1 million. I think it was 1 million. Maybe 1 point something million. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> At that prank. point in time, it was a bit funny. <laughs> it's eh? not like a prank. It was, it was it was quite funny and I, I think maybe they were just still trying to find out oh you know how many people are like, don't worry we'll book the ticket <laughs> we'll book just everything pay just pay that money you know so it was it was quite surprising because you know we you know i hadn't been paid that much ever at that at that time you and know, you so. start feeling like oh my god this work that i've been putting in this hustle yeah. looks like it's going to pay yeah and um you know it was that was very encouraging mm -hmm. and you know it was um something that just you know made me just keep at it and continue working. what gives you the most um revenue from all your three talents so musician acting oh. actor comedian like which one pays man you basically have like three people's careers yeah in one <laughs> uh, i think i think everything is everything is quite is it on the same level is it on the same level? <laughs> you don't want to disclose. Probably not. <laughs> but um, I'm making money from every, all of them. From all of them, and I'm enjoying doing all of them. Yeah. Okay. I'll put it like that. Okay. Yeah. Because you're being sketchy about yeah, how much money you're making. Nah, I need to be careful. <laughs> understand? I need to try this care. <laughs> okay. So, what is your biggest money mistake? The one thing that you've done with your money, I absolutely regretted it. And what did you learn from it? Big money mistake. Um, invested in one of these uh, Ponzi schemes. All oh, those ones that they say, uh, pay <laughs> certain money. Oh, <coughs> after some time, you make double that amount. Uh, because why invest your money in golden products? Uh, why are you, are you <laughs> golden money product. to buy all this Are you talking then? about Swiss gold? By adventure. <laughs> We, we, had another sure. guest, we had another guest that had the same, a similar experience so what what because 
with Ponzi schemes, right, you're mm. not investing in anything. They just tell you you're going to double your money mm. over a short period of time. Mm -hmm. So what convinced you that this was something that you should do? <laughs> the question is, who convinced me? Uh, big shout out to Bolanle. Uh, she called me on the site uh, one very day. Uh, she I told said, you somebody will call you out. <laughs> she said, uh, there's this thing, look, Faust, this is big. You're going to blah, blah, blah. You're going to make money. You're going to... I said, look, I'm sold, okay? <laughs> I'm actually sold. Let's do it. I convinced my guys. <laughs> convinced all my guys. We all agreed. We said, okay, let's do this. Like, it's it's almost like some sort of lottery, you know. Oh my god. Yeah, putting money down. But we felt like it was even more secure than lottery because, because oh, it was you're gold. Buying, you know, supposedly, but buying gold, you know. So worst case scenario, we can ask for our gold. <laughs> So we put a considerable amount of oh money my in, <laughs> and, and basically um, you never, you never got it back. Till today, it's still hanging. Listen, guys, if someone promises you to double your money over a short period of time, there's always a catch. If it sounds too good to be true, yeah. it probably is. So you need to try to catch. Because we have to. I always ask people when you're investing in something and they tell you a particular return. Ask yourself, what business in Nigeria could you actually be doing that would mm. give you that no, kind of return? But I wouldn't, I wouldn't even say that that was necessarily a scam because mm. a lot of people made money off Even the person that called me, I'm sure she she made money off it yeah. as well. Like a lot, of, a lot of people made money off it and it wasn't like a scam. It wasn't a scam. It's, it, I think it's legal. Like all these Ponzi schemes are legal, you know. Are so they? it's yeah, No, they are legal. They are legal. So, okay, you're, you're right in that I believe two things. Like I think that there are Ponzi schemes, but I think that there are also situations where you invest in something you take a risk but the business just doesn't pan out exactly so that's not a scam but mm. nigerians if you don't get your money back everything yeah. is all a scam <laughs> so let's talk about your biggest money win like yeah. something that you've invested your money in and it paid off big i think i would have to say the files experience oh my god yes that was that was huge. Um, it was an investment. It was a massive investment. <laughs> uh, I'm still feeling the heat to date. <laughs> no, but it was big. And at the end of the day, uh, you know, there was a reason for it. It was a very different kind of show, and it wasn't a regular concert. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, despite the fact that I had a quite a, a good number of brands uh, backing me up for it okay. you know it still required a lot of out Personal. of pocket money yeah so it was it, it was, was a that huge big show. it was that big a deal i'd never seen like it reminded me of like those shows that you watch mm -hmm. kevin hart's show mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and it was so different from anything that i'd ever experienced in nigeria so we could see the work that you put into it yeah so what were the just explain to us a little bit about what the revenue streams um were from the concert yeah um okay so <clears throat> obviously uh the brands that came on board so okay. brands brand sponsorship slash okay. partnership um ticket ticket sales mm -hmm. uh now we were able to create a new avenue that i don't think a lot of concerts or you know mm -hmm. shows had been able to do now the content gathered from the show we took that to the cinema exactly when well, i we saw combined... you when, when i saw that I, that's what i was getting at yeah because... we combined uh that content with the pre-show content that we had shot yeah pretty much like a movie mm. so it was like a pro uh sorry pre-show uh sort of film so we combined that with uh, content from the show mm. you know put that together and you know that was pretty much it i movie. thought that was brilliant when yeah. i saw it i was like oh my god this yeah. boy really went to school <laughs> <laughs> created a whole new revenue yeah. stream big shout um, out to the team uh, and of course big shout out to uh live spot for putting the event together as together. well yeah so that was um that was amazing that was good so what is your money philosophy your smart money mantra the one thing you know that you think about when it comes to money Generally speaking, um, <laughs> a friend of mine uh, is always saying this stuff, and you know, big shout out to Abuki the bad guy, um, and it's something that I think uh, I've also adopted as my own personal money philosophy. Yeah, basically, let your money make money for you. Mm. So you don't really. What's the point of having money if you're just gonna leave your money there? Yeah. So just sit down your bank account. 
So your money can. has to be working hard. Thank you very much. Carry your money, put it in something else that is bringing more money. Yeah, you know, at the end of the day, it's, that, is a, that is a saying that we just said in Yoruba language. It's money that we used to find money. I like it. Yeah. Make your money make money for you. Of course. It's so final question. Yeah. We ask all our guests this. If you hammered one billion naira, how would you spend it? How one billion naira. Okay, first of first uh, I visit the clubhouse. Or uh, Hoda Champagne, at least at least fifty bottles. What do you mean by fifty? Close to one thousand bottles. too. Mm, then um, I call up my friends, uh, tell them tell, tell them to send me their bank details. Uh, like, credit their account one million per friend, <laughs> and after can this, I be one of your friends. No, of course, they're already a friend of mine. Uh, after this, I think I will still have a lot of money. Okay. No, but on a serious note, I think I think a billionaire is a lot is, of a, money. is a huge sum of money, and if anyone was to get that, you really shouldn't be broke again in life. Like um, personally, of course, I would invest in my uh, my my business in my label. Okay. Um. Yeah, I think majority of the money will go into my into my label. Um, there, are a couple other stuff that I have planned, you know, that I'm trying to do um, with all the different segments of Fast Bad Guy as well. Okay. So you know, I'm. Um, You'd invest in that. Because yeah, You feel like they'll be more lucrative than other asset classes. You well, wouldn't diversify at all. No, of course I would. I would. I'm 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 a business person as well, so you know, investments. In other uh, aspects of life, it's something that I'm even that you're doing. Focused yeah, on. so even stuff like real estate, you know, definitely um, I would. And I think that's money. one of the most secure investments, really, in life. Because yeah. property is there and it's there for life. You know, it's Everyone yours. needs to live in a house. Exactly. So you know, that's something I'll definitely look at as well. Um, yeah, and I would ball. <laughs> <laughs> you balls hard. I ball. I buy some motors, you know. Of I love it. I love it. Thank you so much for coming Thank on the show. I'm sure that people me. watching are going to learn so much Thank from you. your journey and all your money lessons. Thank you so much. <laughs> C'est le moment, le moment de faire la fête, faire la fête. We are all your neighbor, neighbor. Be sur ma cour magnet. That was a very interesting conversation with Falari Falano, aka Fals the Bad Guy. My three takeaways from that interview were one, learn how to monetize all your skill sets. Fals has gone from being a musician to going into comedy and acting. He took advantage of opportunities that were presented to him and found ways to monetize skills that he already had. Two, even if we live in an age where People are glamorizing 409 and Yahoo Boy lifestyle. Fal says that we should stop giving into instant grat gratification and start being patient because the hustle will eventually pay if you find a legal path and work hard. The third takeaway from this interview was social media is a powerful platform. And you have to find a way to use your voice positively. So how are you showing up in the world? Files recently did a cover for Childish Gambino's This Is America. His was called This Is Nigeria. It got critical acclaim from loads of people all over the world, including global personality P. Diddy. So you never know who's watching. Use your platform wisely. See you next time. Thank you.